Okay. Um, all right, you ready? Oh, man. Get a little shakes up here. So what we want to do is we want to classify these numbers. Um, so what I have is negative 1 sixth, negative 0.3, the square root of 1, negative 2 thirteenths, and 7 eighths. So what you guys should notice um, by looking up here is we have some numbers all in different forms. So it's really, really hard for us to be able to classify them when they're all in different forms, right? I have some as a fraction, some represented as a radical, um, and then some just as pure decimal. So the best and easiest way to um, organize and be able to list from least to greatest is to convert everything to a decimal. Now, we don't need to get the exact decimals, all right? Because I know some of these are going to have some pretty long decimals, if not any repeating. But we just need to approximate here, unless we have some two decimals that are very close together, then we can get a little more exact. But I'm just going to round uh, my decimals here. So if I have 1 divided by negative 1 divided by 6, we can see rounds to negative 0.16 repeating. So I'm just going to rewrite that as a negative 0.167, as I'm just going to round it up. Then negative 0.3 is already a decimal. Please don't put this in your calculator. Just think about what square root means, OK? The square root means what number multiplied by itself produces your radicand, which is 1. Well, obviously, the only number that you can multiply by itself to produce 1 is 1. Then I have negative 2 divided by 13. That's going to produce me a negative 1.5. Oh, I'm sorry. 0.1538, which I'll round to a 4, comma, then I do 7 divided by 8, which is 0.875. Okay, so now I got to create my number line. Now, the important thing about when doing the number line is you got to look, you know, how big and small do we need to do? Do I need to have 0 in the middle? Do I have a, need to have another number in the middle? Well, what we notice is we need to look at our extreme. What is the largest number we go to, and what's the smallest number we go to? Well, the smallest number we go to is a negative 0.3. So we know we can get to negative 1 half. And then the largest number we get to is a positive 1. So we can work with having 0 in the middle, but I don't need to get any bigger than 1, nor do I need to get any smaller than negative 1. So all of my numbers can be able to found in, within those two parameters. So this would be 0.5, negative 0.5. And you know, I could just do 0 0.75, 0 0.25, negative 0 0.25, 2.5, and a negative 0.75. So what I'm doing is I'm just breaking it down into force. You could break it down into tenths. You could break it down as small as you really as you want. But I'm just going to break it down into force just to give me an idea. Because all I'm really looking into doing is just organizing these. So let's go and look at where would negative 0.3 be. Well, I'm not going to get an exact placement, but negative 0.3 is going to be somewhere between negative 0.25 and negative 0.5. So I'll just label it right there and say negative 0.3. It's going to be roughly somewhere right around there. Then the next smallest number would be negative 0.16. Well, 0.16 is obviously going to be bigger than negative 0.25, so that's going to be somewhere right around there. Okay, So now I'm getting into, oops, I forgot a number. Negative 0.15 is going to be the next one, which you can see is larger than negative uh, 0.167. So that's going to be kind of smooched in there, right there, which would be a negative 1.54. All right, so you can see how these three numbers, they're very close to each other, but this one is going to be larger than that number, so therefore it's going to be closer to 0 on my scale. Next, I need to find 0.875. That's going to be roughly estimating right around here, 0.875. And then 1 is obviously going to be right there. And there you go. That is your numbers labeled from least to greatest in order.